Hey, Mark, Matt Smith, Southern Pigskin. You'll be happy to know that Mike and Stephen only wanted to talk about Southern Miss. I tried, but they were uh, taking the politically correct route, but I'll try you too. With last year, I think, con being considered a successful season despite still not cracking that Florida, Georgia, Tennessee hurdle, is the program now at this point where you guys really got to beat at least one of those three, if not more, to have the season as a whole be considered a success. To beat which which three? To be considered a successful season now that you've checked the bowl off the list, checked beating Louisville off the list, you have to get one of those three now for the season as a whole to be considered what a successful year. W Florida, what? Tennessee, Georgia, the top um, three. I, I, you know, it's very strange for me to answer that question at this point, you know, in the summer because you know, we're, we're just worried about preparing to win games, to win every game, right? I mean, w why would I concede one of those? If I said, yeah, we wanted to win one of them, do I just give up the other two? I mean, that's not the way we approach things. It's not even the way I, I can't answer questions like that because it's just not the way I could even think about it. We're going to prepare to win every football game. Do I realize that that's a tall task? Absolutely but I'm not gonna concede anything. I think it's important to show progress. I think if you look at the, the three teams that you've mentioned, we've had good games with them and then we've had some games when we haven't looked so good. You know, so I think it's really about us and our consistency. Um, you know, we, we've had our opportunities. You look at last year's game, there's no, we didn't play very good at all against Florida, went on the road and just, you know, got our quarterback hurt on the second play of the game and looked terrible. You know, I think it was the year before. The last time we played there, you know, we, we really had a, fantastic shot of winning the game, you know, so it's about us and our play and our consistency, um, you know, more so that I'm worried about what the other teams are doing because one thing I know about the three teams that you mentioned is they're not going to take any steps backwards. They're well coached and they're working hard and they got good players. Let's go here, left side, second row. Matt Stevens, Montgomery Advertiser. Mark, I'm sure you've been asked about this constantly, but the decision that your brother made, can you walk us through how you found out about it? And kind of maybe more than anybody, you might be able to give us more perspective on kind of what his thought process was throughout the whole deal. Sure. Um, it, I found out it was in my office. He called me in the summer, and uh, I was shocked. I had to, I was just set it in the main room, but uh, when I got that uh, call from him, uh, I immediately walked out, walked out my back door, and I have a, w a way to get right to the practice field. So I was just out on the practice field, wandering around, uh, talking to him on the phone, and uh, I was shocked. You know, I, I guess what I described in there, and to say it again, is I was shocked. But when you really sit back and think about it, not too surprised with it. Um, you know, uh, it is what he said it is. That's what I know, and uh, you know, Bob. You know, he, he's going to say and do what it is. There's no hidden meaning. There's no hidden agenda. He's been there for 18 and a half years, um, and it was time for him to walk away. I think what uh, makes me feel proud for him is the success he had, and he walk, he's walking away how he wants to, when he wants to, and, and for whatever reason is important to him. And that makes me very happy for him and his wife, Carol, and his family. So um, the, the, that's just it. He had had enough. I think it's also, if you know anything about Bob, um, it's very important for him to hand that program off the way it is. How many people do you know? I'm not sure. I know there's been some um, that have walked away on their own terms with a good winning team. Um, but that's Bob. I think it's important to him to hand off a team to have his people in place as long as they can be, to have the continuity in place as long as it, it can be. His, his people that work under him are important. The university is extremely important to him, and they have a very good football team. And I, it, he, he felt the time was right. He, he seems very complacent. He feels very at peace with his decision to this point. But again, this is the time of year when he'd be doing the same things in the summer. So I'm sure, I think he knows it, and it'll be a little bit different when the fall rolls around. So uh, I think it's just one day at a time for him. But, uh, but, but it is what it is. And what he said and his message is the same message I have. Let's go here, uh, left side in the front row. Dan Matthews, gridironnow.com. Coach, are you confident that the uh, program's uh, mentality and, and the culture has changed? Uh, without question, without question, the culture has changed. As I mentioned in years past, it's very easy to change a climate. You know, you walk in, you get a new coaching staff, you get some 
some raw raw going. You may change your uniforms and you you know you to put some paint on the wall and uh, you know you could change the climate of some place relatively quickly with some uh, positive steam and and you know some you know some good hires and things like that. But to change a culture takes some time and work. And uh, it's deep rooted um, and uh, it, it definitely uh, takes a little bit more time. And uh, I am pleased with where we're at. We're not satisfied. We have a long way to go. We know that. But we're, we're taking steps in, in the right direction. Um, our players expect to win, but more importantly, they embrace the daily grind, the way they go about their business. And that's constantly what you talk about, you know, build select and develop. Build a winning culture, select the right players, and intentionally develop them once they get on their campus. I mentioned it in the, in the main room and I'll mention it now. If you heard me talk last year, I talked about capacity. Our team needed more in the tank. We needed to stress them more. They needed longer workouts. They needed harder running sessions in the summer. We needed harder practice. But you have to physically be able to do that. You have to mentally be able to accept that and do that and have that attention to detail in the meeting rooms. We needed to stress them more. That came to fruition last year. We didn't start the way we wanted to, but we won seven of the last ten down the stretch. So we won some close games. We, we, it culminated with a big win against Louisville in the last game of the year against the Heisman Trophy winner against our arch rival on the road. We were strong enough to withstand the year and the, the rigors of an SEC schedule. Much the same this year. Continue to build on that. Continue to get stronger. Be more consistent in our approach. And we're starting to do that. That's culture. Right side here, second row on the aisle. Yeah, we, we've done very well locally. First things first, we take care of home. This past year wasn't a big year in Kentucky. This, you know, the, 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 not as big as here. We've always had good players in Kentucky, just not as many as some other states. But there's some good quality. I feel very uh, confident and very comfortable with the, the recruiting we're doing in state. I think you're going to see that in the next couple years, some fantastic players from the state of Kentucky. That will help us. That helps every program if you can start at home. Then what's helped us is to go so close to go to uh, go to Ohio because of the proximity of Ohio, southern southern Ohio, Cincinnati, and that's right across the river from us there. And and so and you could get to so many schools up to central Ohio. And then my connections and Coach Morrow's connections to northeastern Ohio, um, you know, the, the, it's been very successful for us. We have to go into the deep south still. You know, there's great players in the south. We have to go in there. But it's been our little niche to grab some great players from from more of the Midwest area because of our proximity to the SEC schools. And then uh, because, as you know, it, yeah, I could come down here. You give me 50 of the top guys I could get down here, and then we're going to be pretty darn good. But, uh, the, but those are some, uh, some real challenging battles. We're not afraid to have those battles. We're not afraid to mix it up. We've just got to be smart in, in where we're drawing guys from. We've started, you know, locally. We've expanded into the south, of course. We've done very well in Florida this past year. And now we're starting to branch out into some area, other areas up in the mix, Michigan. We've done good in D.C., which isn't too far from us. So I, I really um, want to compliment our staff. I think our staff has done a wonderful job of working exceptionally hard in identifying talent early. That's been a, a, a very uh, good niche for our staff, and I compliment them on their work ethic and their approach and what we've done in that area. It doesn't mean we're going to win every one of them, but, but we've identified some good players early, and we've worked hard at building relationships with them. Looks like we have time for only just one last question. We'll go front row here on the right. Uh, Michael Brennan from Saturday Down South. Uh, according to Steven Johnson, he's been told he'll be the uh, opening starter. Can you confirm that? Yeah, uh, Stephen has earned the, the right to be the starting quarterback. And, uh, you know, but again, just like, and, I, and I'll talk about this a hundred times this, this preseason camp, it's just like the strong safety or the defensive lineman or, you know, the offensive guard. You know, if you're a returning starter, if you've done what it takes to put yourself in a position to be the starter, then you've earned that right. 
we have quite a few practices before our first day. Stephen also knows that he has to go earn that job every day. And so a year ago, when I was in here, the big talking point was, wow, it was really nice for me to be in here for the first time without having any con cur uh, quarterback controversy. Well, that didn't last very long. You know what I mean? And so, so, you know, he got hurt in the second game of the year, and now Stephen comes in and does very well. So, of course, we have confidence in Stephen. He helped us win seven games and put us in a position to win some games. He's earned that right. But like every position, he's, he's got to maintain that starting position. I expect Drew Barker to come back at full strength and play at the level that he was before, and Drew was doing some very good things.